What's poppin', everybody? This is not an episode of What's Poppin' with Jacques Slade. This is another episode of the Please don't podcast. Us. I'm Robbie, here to have some Christmas fun and spread some Christmas joy with my guys, Mike and Rowett. How you two doing? Good, brother. Doing good. How are you guys doing? I'm doing well as well. Uh, I'm glad we're not What's Poppin', we're Sneaker History. And <laughs> Please don't sue us, Jacques. <laughs> Man, just trying to say what's popping in a powerful tone makes me appreciate him infinitely more because he always has the right levels of energy, and I don't. It's practice, I, I, man. I struggle. I feel with it. it. I feel he says like "What's popping" fifteen times in a mirror before he says it on the mic, and it's very much an alpha <laughs> opening greeting. Like, what is popping? I really need to evaluate everything I'm doing. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know what's popping. I mean, it's the only instagram show i'll watch and now it's like you know clip show i'll yeah. actually stop and like enjoy and watch so shout out yeah. to him and his phenomenal work we had him on the podcast many moons ago so if you're looking for a good interview episode why don't you go tap into an episode a couple scrolls down the a couple scrolls down the list um word but anywho we're going to talk about christmas shoes but before we get into that Let's talk about what we've been rocking and what we're looking to cop. So, yeah. Rowan's diving for it first. So, why don't you go, first? <laughs> go for it? Listen, I'm the one that has the least amount of substance. So, I figured I'll give you guys more room to wax poetic while I just show this because podcasting is a visual medium. We have the Kobe Seven Christmases. And as Robbie had alluded to, this will probably come up a couple more times over the course of this episode. I just like it because I think it is got the right amounts of a christmas shoe without being overtly christmas because it matches that grinch green and i promise this will be the last time any of us say the word grinch because i think we've been <laughs> overusing it in a while so we're definitely going into festive mode with that or festivist mode but yeah i just love that shoe i love everything about it because i think in hindsight the seven is very underrated just don't play basketball in it because it will mess oh, up your foot. i second that uh put, hold your shoe up again Roy. i gotta i gotta see something you gotta zoom it out too. Pull it towards your face. All right, there now, you go. we. I want everybody to appreciate this because you turn that toe box around. This man wears his shoe. He ain't just sitting there collecting dust. Like, mm. team right. wear your sneakers. I yes, sir. complained to Robbie. I needed to wash them, but he did the right thing. He said, "No, wear your sneakers." So I thank you again, Don Carleone Felici, and I'm sure I butchered your <laughs> name again. So I apologize. For that. Nah, you're good. I mean, so I, I have to say. There is a new series, and it's about Christmas, um, where it breaks down Christmas movies on Netflix. And one of them, um, it's like the nostalgia one. They did it with Home Alone. They did it with Dirty Dancing. I forget the name of the series. Yeah. Movies We Remembered, I think. Movies We Remembered, something like oh, that. Okay. And they did Elf. And the guy that plays Elf's dad was Michael Corleone. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Scott Kahn's father, James Kahn. Yeah. yeah, there you James go. Kahn. And um, in one scene, uh, the guy that directed Iron Man, John Favreau, um, mm -hmm. needed to get him hyped up for the scene. So he said, you're fucking Michael Cotillon. And to his <laughs> ear, and then he delivered the line. And it's the one where um, Buddy's dad is like yelling at him, get out of my office, get out, get out, get out. That's because John whispered in his ear. Well, see, that's what the great directors do. They take they their do. talent and elevate them to that next level. I also Gotta get them there. A really good, a really good, uh, uh, you know, Reader's Digest version of a part of that movie. So go watch the whole Netflix <laughs> thing. It's really interesting. <laughs> it's a good one. I want to check that out. I didn't know the show even existed. No, there's a ton of one, a ton of that nice, with really nice, good movies. Nice. There's one on like toys from the '80s as well. Oh yeah, uh, so, I saw one. that one. Um, I fall asleep to that one now on purpose. I've watched it so many times. It's like. <laughs> night quill and it's like bye <laughs> done um, mike what do you what are you rocking though yeah man let me let me grab them real fast there's two of them because i start my day at 5 a.m and these bad boys here in the jj watt fours gotta hit the gym early and that question colorway oof, oof. And, and then i i finished out the day in these bad boys so got the uh the yeezy quantum in the teal blue colorway and you guys got to see the video I did on them because I didn't do a review because you guys have been beat over the head about Yeezys and they're the same. It's whatever. But I got this bad boy for way cheaper than it should be. 
And balling on a budget. Balling on a budget, man. But I like them. They're a dope shoe. This one is the lifestyle version without the TPU cage. So it's all prime knit, a little reflective, still a good slab of boost. So I don't know. I like them. I, I've been wanting this since they uh, they dropped an all-star and I finally got my hands on them. So better late than never. That's beautiful. Yeah, man. What are you looking to cop? When I'm looking to cop. Um, so not a shoe, actually. I don't have a shoe on the radar right now. It is actually going back to these nerd roots. So there's a new comic out from Marvel called King and Black. So I got the first issue of it. I oh. want, there is a few variant covers that I need to get my hands on. And, uh, okay. I, I've kind of been doing the, the same hustle we do for sneakers. I've been doing the same thing for these covers right now. So that's just on my list. Are you doing the, and I hate using the term because it's a very stereotypical nerd show, but the Big Bang move where you're just scouring through the crates, digging, and you're like, uh-huh. ah. Oh, yeah. I got to move the camera over one day because there's this boxes next to me. Uh, over Black Friday, me and my dad went to like the local store in, in my hometown, and mm-hmm. he had a sale. I basically spent 100 bucks on books, but it came out with a stack like that big. So sale was good. Again, we we ball on the budget everywhere we everywhere we go. <laughs> it's the only way. Yes, sir. That's awesome, though. Um, I know there's been some interest in you talking about comic books, and I would really tune in because I love the characters. I don't know anything about the books, so that'd be some really good content. Got it coming. It's coming. Um, for me, I've actually today been rocking the Reebok <gasps> question. Ooh. Uh, Dallas Cowboy, and the reason why I wore it today, I had to stop and think about it a little bit, is because there's not one thing in the history of my life that's been that's made me wear a Dallas Cowboy anything. <laughs> Luckily, this has no branding. It has a <laughs> tree on the back. There's no star on it. But Thank this goodness. Is closest, this is the closest to Cowboy Nation I am ever getting. <laughs> ever. That's period. Just- I was going to say the only star associated with that is a guy wearing it, right? So, exactly. Right? So, you're number one if you had these shoes on. But the Cowboys <laughs> are such a joke. And I'm double salty because I had Zeke, El- I have Zeke Elliott in my fantasy team. Fumble McGee? Fumble McGee. <laughs> and, and with no quarterback, he's not doing anything. It's, it's been. <laughs> I'm gonna lose money this year, and that's okay. It's just like there's nothing good about the Cowboys in my book. Minus, oh, I'm trying to get like weird light on it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a holy grail. You're just like freaking out. <laughs> now I want the American national anthem playing back because you know it is America's team. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you like, go. The star. Um, if you're listening in your typical fashion on your favorite podcast platform. You're probably thinking, what are these guys laughing at? What are they doing? We did a video this time. So there's, there's faces moving and there's shoes moving. Um, so <laughs> tune into YouTube if you're listening and you can see what we look like and see what we're doing and enjoy this in a different way. So that's that's my power segue right there into, oh. our, um, into our reviews. So we have one here um, from a guy I know quite well, Mr. Ryan Chu out here in beaverton oregon um ryan said shout out to robbie mike and nick and row of course obviously um always a good conversation regarding the shoes we love and maybe the shoes we love to hate love how they keep it real and it's definitely reminiscent of the old forum talk days if you know you know keep up the great work um keep up the great work y'all and i love to see more video content maybe a live recording of a podcast with audience engagement and that's so awesome that you say because i was tinkering around before we started recording this and there is an option for audience so i don't know how that affects performance i'm thinking we do a test run with our patreon exclusive folks to see how it works that second part of the plan was just right off the top that that was no prior planning and then damn that's a good idea um but yeah so We'll look into that. I just realized it's a thing about a half an hour ago. So, power to us. We got this. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
Um, you can see me now at Club Desk, just rocking crazy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I said, yeah, like I said, it's Rave Robbie, it's Hotline Bling Robbie. It doesn't matter. Whatever your musical genre preference is, Robbie. <laughs> I will meme myself one day of just a little <laughs> Hotline Bling dance. Um, but speaking of cold things, Drake's just cold, man. I don't care if you like Drake or not, but like numbers don't lie. When you start beating Beatles numbers, on the regular, like you're doing something right. And like, that's all I got to say. I'm not going to go <laughs> on the Drake high horse, but just Canadian Elvis is killing it, man. Like every one of these damn Instagram stories I see of people Spotify is it's always Drake is somewhere in the top 10. Always. always. That dude has been consistent for a decade. He's kind of on a hove like run and I'm here for it. Like, he doesn't necessarily always speak to my sensitive thug size, but when he does, it hits. It hits well, and kudos to you, Aubrey. You're doing the damn thing. Yeah. Even his worst album is still playable. I mean, I'm still the same person that plays. Was it uh Oh my God, what's what's that the album? Was it Thank? No, no, no. Uh, was it Thank Me, thank me Later? Oh yeah, Thank Me, thank me Later. The, that's the one. Uh, well, I think the Weeknd wrote that one. Most of it, so it's kind of like a. Maybe a Look cheat, like but is, is that the one with the jo- uh, the gold chalice and he's just looking at it like yeah. wondering where his life went wrong? Yeah, that's a classic yeah. for sure. Dude, it's just a banger, the whole album. Look what yep. you've done to me. Yeah, yeah that's a. <laughs> There's, I mean, what's so funny is he has so many songs that I don't even know what song is on which album at this point. I just know that I like them all. It's a monster playlist. Like the it's dude fair. is the first playlist artist in a sense. Mm-hmm. What's really crazy is like. One dance sounds good again. It was played so much. It came on in a mix a couple of days ago, and I was like, "Oh shit, I need a one dance." And I was like, <laughs> enjoying it in my living room. And I was like, "Oh, well, dude. the point where I changed the station when this came on." Now <laughs> it's good again. That uh, that genre of music is coming back. That uh, that he used for that, and you got what people like what Burner Boy. All those cats who are like that that genre is like come full circle back around. It's like, oh, one dance sounds amazing again, just because it's it's pleasing to the ears at this point. Listen, I'm here for any sort of comeback for Sean DePaul or our man Dylon from the <laughs> band because he truly is top five. So <laughs> Fada Clef, he's not choking you anywhere. He's just trying to make it back out on these streets. So we're all here for it. And I'm ready for the reggae revival because I mean, hell, we've had what a swing revival. I'm sure we'll get a metal revival in the future, but let's we're here for the reggae revival. We need to kind of put our feet up because this past year has been hellacious to say the least. Yep. Bro, it don't care what people say. <laughs> Sneaker history gonna make it one day. I got the one <laughs> mic and the one Nike. Also, shout out to respect to man Nick. I know I was kind of gibberish, but you know what? I'll make it happen. You know what? That was that was still good. winning. <laughs> winning. That was something. I mean, that was probably the same kind of rap Kawhi Leonard says in the locker room. I have to think he's just. <laughs> I like to think he makes funny songs when he's just like in his in his in his free time. He's like, I'm not he's the that. NBA's weird Al Yankovic. Like he just has parody <laughs> hits after parody hits. <laughs> not even that, but I'm sure you two and a lot of our listeners walk around making songs about cheese or whatever you're eating. And I like to think why just gets really goofy in his personal time. He's like a lot of Jolly fish, Rancher raps. Goldfish. <laughs> 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 Goldfish, 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 goldfish. I'm I'm ready for the New Balance Goldfish collab because now that Robbie's uh, spoken it in existence, it's gonna happen. That'd there be it is. great. Come up with a check though. Wow. So listen to this. Um the the slogan for goldfish for a long time was the snack that smiles back goldfish. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. All you have to have is Kawhi not smiling and then smile. That's the commercial. This not smile to smile. That's it. You're done. You got straight face goldfish now? Right to <laughs> stone check. face. No, the stone face and then smile back and then he smiles. Oh, uh, see, I was thinking every time you open up a goldfish container, you get the Kawhi laugh. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was more banjo kazooie. Mike had it right. Listen, that's why I'm here. I purposely set the bar very low so Mike can clear it and showcase that he is the premier impressionist. Oh, on I just knocked this down in my whole. Oh no! <laughs> Poor man doesn't get paid. Where did Mike oh, go? Yeah. This is what happens when videos happen. There we anyway, go. 
Mike, quit flailing. You're not a magic card. <laughs> over here. Dude, it got crazy <laughs> real quickly. Banjo and Kazooie? Was he it got crazy. <laughs> no, he was, he, was a, he, was a, he was a bear and a, and a bird. He was the bear and the bird. Yeah. And what was the one that like just went hard to M? Was that Conquer? Yeah, that was um, Conquer's Bad Fur Day. I mean, we're, we're getting away. I brought up Kawhi because he has a cool <laughs> Christmas shoe coming out. And of the Kawhi, I guess we can call it the Kawhi 2. Kawhi not call it the Kawhi 2. <laughs> there it is. Oh, there there it is. we go. <laughs> um, the Kawhi, much stronger, simpler name than his first one. But it's this Christmas shoe. Um, it has like an abominable snowman claw reminiscent of the Toronto Raptors logo of the 90s. It's just a cool colorway, man. It's just like icy. It's something fun. It's less wild than the Jolly Ranchers, which I was, which I were not, was not feeling, were not feeling them. However, you want to describe a pair of shoes. Um, what, what do you guys think about these? You, you feeling these new balances? You're gonna buy a pair, maybe? Uh, I'm trying to get the picture back up. I had it, looking at it, disappear. But here we go. Uh, they're cool. I don't see myself buying them unless I walk into a store like seventy nine ninety nine. That's the money uh, price right there. Yeah. Once again, balling on a budget for us, Mike. I think I'll go one step further and be like, yeah, maybe 50 bucks. And Ooh. it's like it's like the second of a buy one, get the other one 50% off. Maybe then. But go. they're eerily reminiscent of like that Charlotte Hornets colorway that I think because I got the Kobe undefeated pack, I'm good with like white and teal sneakers. So I'll pass on this one. But it is a very unique looking shoe. So shout out to Kawhi for doing the damn thing. And the tongue with the claw label is nice because I do think he's got one of the more underrated nicknames in professional sports. So good on you. Subtle flex by Rowan just sneaks in. I got the Kobe undefeated pack, but it don't, no listen, big deal. I'm trying, <laughs> listen, I'm just trying to make sure you guys, I keep up with you guys because you guys have been doing this a lot longer and I have to pull out these <laughs> measures because I have to prove my adequacy to myself because if we're actually speaking truth to facts, I'm not as good as you guys about the secret thing. So it's very much a Roman Abramovich Chelsea pet move where I can't compete with history, so I have to compete with the pocketbook. And even then, that's before the wife finds out. And then I'm in jail. Like, where did these come from? They've been here. Oh, me... yeah. <laughs> Man, I quit playing that that question mark game of where did these come from? And you know, damn boxes. You know, I'm a crackhead. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> Yeah, hey, they, Oregon's got a lot of new rehab laws working out for us, so we're okay with that. And drugs are a-okay there. <laughs> Sneaker addiction is one thing that um, maybe needs to be explored more in, in terms of treatment. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> if, if, if get your priorities right. If, if you can pay your rent and pay your bills, buy the shoes. Yes. Bingo. So as long as you're not jeopardizing your 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 bare needs your basic needs of the your community. livelihood and you your family's eat. livelihood <laughs> yeah don't do that don't. that is a bad decision yeah i've had people i know growing up in las vegas uh, where their dad mortgaged the house gambling i don't think anybody's mortgaging the house on a pair of yeezys so it's not all i hope not at least i sure hope not <laughs> Right. Yeah, this is our PSA for our audience. Please don't be that person. And we're not even saying that guy because it can happen to all of us regardless of gender. Yeah. Just don't be that person. Keep it within your means. Now, if you're leveraging like a 2002 Toyota Corolla. Oh, <laughs> fine. Random. Fine. Yeah, right. <laughs> for a pair of galaxies? Yeah, we perfect. <laughs> it's like, man, I really want these blinks. Okay, give me that car. Um, <laughs> Which gets me thinking about like Toyotathon and Lexus Days of Giving and Infinity Christmas sales and Mercedes Benz commercials when Hubby comes through with a brand new. It's like, here, have this SLA or, you know, this MG, this, I don't even know freaking Mercedes car. G Wagon. <laughs> yeah, have, have this yeah. G Wagon. It's uh, Mercedes Days of Giving. Uh, the craziness. That's never going to happen with shoes. The worst thing that happens with Christmas and shoes is that you don't get the pair you want or the brand releases them after Christmas and you have to wait 360 days to wear them. Nah, I'm wearing them right then and there. You can't stop. Yeah, them. I was going to say. <laughs> you can't I've, stop. I've worn those, those Kobe 7s in the middle of the summer and people are like, hey, aren't those a Christmas shoe? And it's like, it's, it's winter in Australia. 
behind yeah, the business. Yeah, we're in Australia. <laughs> we're Mr. Worldwide. Like I listen to <laughs> Pitbull. I was going to ask, and you two just ran with it. Do you wear Christmas shoes year round? And you two both sound like resounding yeses. I think Why the key not? is making get it getting Christmas sneakers that aren't explicitly Christmas sneakers. So we'd mentioned the Kobe Seven, even the Kobe Eight, right? Depending on who you ask, that could be an ugly sweater. It could be a pair of old Christmas lights. It doesn't matter. I just say it's a black shoe with a nice colorway. And it reminds me of, uh, what is what should we call it? Rainbow fish. And there was that book we read in elementary school about a lovely rainbow fish. So I just say it's an homage to that book. There you go. I am adamant about not wearing Christmas shoes outside of Christmas time. I bought those LeBron 7 Christmas shoes and they've been sitting dead stock for like five months now. Well, it's waiting for Christmas time. You have about 23 so, days left. You got it. There you go. <laughs> I was going to say, do you feel the same way about 4th of July shoes? Because yes. those can also be kind of a seasonal flex. So I'm so about that to where I won't wear my United We Rise Hyperdunks. Unless, so it doesn't have to be exactly July 4th. It can be the week of July 4th. But that's definitely like a July shoe. Like it has to be around some kind of stupid patriotic holiday but um yeah I'm, I'm adamant and Rowett, you were saying that maybe get christmas shoes that don't look very christmasy to me that defeats the purpose why do i want this christmas themed shoe if it doesn't look that much like christmas ah, so, fair enough so there's a couple ways to to slice that listeners let us know what you think do you wear your favorite christmas shoe year round are you that dude in the middle of august outdoor hooping <laughs> And these Christmas quies come, you know, five months from now. What are you doing? Uh, let us know. But um, we wanted to kind of dive into Christmas memories, um, Christmas shoes. Uh, those are kind of the two main topics we have for you guys. So I'll start off with like my one story I have about Christmas shoes. We were thinking about what was a gift of shoes you received? And it doesn't have to be Christmas. It can be Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, nothing. If it's just in the holiday time, um, it doesn't have to be specifically Christmas. But um, for me, it was the Jordan 2 QF from like 2010, the white and black mm -hmm. Jordan 2s with like the fake snakeskin on like the side paneling. They're goofy, man. Um, my dad bought them for me. And they're the only pair of shoes I can remember, like Jordans, getting for a Christmas holiday from any family member at any point. I know one year, maybe it was like, what, 2003, um, I got the red Tracy McGrady T-Mac 3s, and I had to go buy the blue ones on my own later so I could mismatch them. feel really cool. But um, the QF2s were one, and it's funny, I, I still have them. I'll now never let them go. But um, I tried to sell them to Urban Necessities when I was moving from Vegas to Portland. And they were there for like a month and a half and weren't selling. And I was like, oh, dude, they're not worth like the $110. Like, and I had them shipped back to me. I was like, I'm actually just going to keep those. So I'm happy I did, and they'll never go nice. away. Even when they're crumbled, they'll sit there forever. But... Uh, Mike made a joke earlier about my my parents thinking like, oh, we don't want to we don't want to um, enable your habit. And that's exactly <laughs> their mindset. They looked at it like I was smoking cigarettes and I was asking for a pack of smokes for Christmas. And it was just like, <laughs> no, just like get me a Nike gift card. Actually, scratch that. The saying Nike gift card. One year, my parents gave me a Nike gift card and I went to Nike Las Vegas and I bought the KD six christmas shoes mm -hmm. okay uh, that that like and they were open on vegas is weird i believe they yes were on christmas really so, yeah. oh yeah I, yep oh, okay so i bought them so i remember being the gift card is like i need to go for a walk or go for a drive <laughs> so like i'm gonna go spend this gift card really quick so um i guess that's three shoes when i said i only have one but did you go one, to the nike store on the strip oh yeah i used to work there so I knew the quick ways to go there. Y'all were open on Christmas? That just blows my mind. I just imagine everything shut down. Like, that's what I'm oh, used no, to. No, like, no. nothing open. 
No, I'll, I'll use this as a segue to talk about some of my Christmas stories. The Malhotras love going to Vegas on Christmas, even though none of us drink, none of us smoke. We just like being in that city around the holidays. Yeah. And I've been at Nike for a couple of years now, and it became a running joke where whatever vacation we were on, I had to go see the Nike town in that particular location. So we did it when we went to London for the Olympics. We Every time we would go to Vegas, we would go, we would go to the Nike town. I would always sheepishly say uh i'm an employee can how do you work the discount here and i would just would want to kick my own ass after the <laughs> interaction but that uh that nike town in is it caesar's palace robbie correct that has supplied many a holiday gift from me because i'm the bad son and i always forget so a lot of people got socks from that nike town in vegas uh <laughs> i got the kd8 around christmas time and it was really funny because we had gone to the mobile point of sale at that point. So I was working with one of the athletes in the store. And rather than wait in line, I had to be a posh boy and ask if they had the mobile point of sale so I could do the transaction there. And the lady who was my athlete said, oh, do you want the shoebox to go alongside? And my mom goes, yes, he's one of those sneaker heads. And I was like, yep, this, she knows what she's doing. So she that knows. was my opinion. She knows. Like, so she knows. That's my Christmas uh, Vegas Nike story. But uh, the other one I can think of is we were standing in line at the employee store when you were allowed to stand in line, I think, overnight oh. for one of the Jordan 11s. And this was very early on in my sneakerhead career. So I'm standing there with some friends. I don't even know what the shoe was. I just knew somebody wanted them and they were out of town. So I volunteered and said, yeah, I'll stand in line for you because I wanted to hang out with my buddies. Mm -hmm. And I just remember walking through the line and seeing these guys that were in their car but they weren't joining the line and i kept looking back at them so finally one of my friends shook me and said ro when we go inside you get the sneaker meet us all outside and as soon as we're all out together we're gonna run it and me being like the butters of our crew is like what does run it mean so i got to learn what that popular phrase meant the connotation of it and fortunately for us we did not have to run it because those guys weren't in their car waiting for us in the parking lot so there we go. That was mine. What about you, Mike? What do you got Dang. in terms of Christmas memory? So I got two. I got two. Uh, one of them is when I worked at Champs back in 2011, my last year of college. Um, so it was when the 11s came out, the Concords. And I worked at release. That was the deal. Manager was really cool. It was like, if you work at release, I'll sell you a pair. And that's back when you can use your discount on it. So the shoe was oh. what? I, on a high end in 2011, it was at 185 for the Concords. I think, yeah. Out the door, I paid one eleven, and I got to go through each box and pick which ones didn't have all the paint stains or the glue stains on it. So that was fantastic. But as we had our shoes away, worked release, it was a cluster between us at Champs, Finish Line, um, uh, Foot Action, Foot Locker. It was insane. Like they shut them all down in Waco where I was working. Uh, there was a riot in the Foot Action where people started just fighting and just stealing just things out of the store. Forget the 11s. They were just stealing things out of the store. And so they shut them all down until about noon or so. And my manager was like, you guys cannot take these out of the store right now. He's like, I'm not going to be responsible for anyone getting shanked because there was like police arresting people outside for fighting. Right. Um, and we get back to the mall. We, we come back to work, uh, like say around noon. And, you know, we get our shoes when we leave. But the funniest thing about it was the, you know, you know, all those kiosks with the guy selling the jewelry in the middle. Tell me why they were selling Jordy Levens for like 500 bucks in the middle of the mall. Like they were like StockX before StockX. Like I guess some of the people at Foot Locker sold their shipment to them just to get easy money because they paid them above retail. And oh, people wow. were slinging 11s out of the jewelry booth in the middle of the mall. And it, there's a whole crowd around. It's, it's nonsense. But that was the first 11 ever. That was the... Yeah, first 11 I ever paid with my own money, so I was really happy about that one. I still have it to this day. Um, but then transitioning to a gift I received back in 2009, I remember my uh, – at one point, my grandmother was just really just like, hey, go pick your present. You can't have it right now, but you can pick it. Watch me buy it, and I'll wrap it later. <laughs> and this was when the Altitude 13 had come back out. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, dude, I, I want that. And, of course, it gets to a point of, oh, yeah, we don't have your size. But there was – Everything but my size. It was everything but a size 10. That's when Jordan, certain, certain retros were still hanging around. You could just grab them. So I ended up going with the D-Rose 1, which I still love that shoe to this day. But disappointed that I didn't get the, uh, the altitudes. But 
it was no fault of anybody's. They just didn't have my size. But Christmas comes, open a present. It's like, oh, I know what this one is. Get a second box, though, from my parents, and it happens to be the Kobe 5 playoff pack. Probably one of the best Christmas shoe days ever. I was like, this is perfection. I literally, there's a picture of me somewhere wearing a D-Rose 1 and a Kobe 5 on each foot, just walking around the house for the whole day. <laughs> Fantastic. I, I think that was a... That was a Christmas matchup one year. Yep. It might have been. The Bulls beat the brakes. Beat the brakes off the Lakers. <laughs> I believe. I think that sounds about right. That's yeah. So cool though. I'm always so impressed by how and and you and I know you said that you give your parents like options, but just the fact that that they don't mess it up is just like mind-boggling <laughs> to me. They're very like, like attention to detail. So I send a picture, then I send like a link to somewhere. So it's like, oh, I get the description and the picture. And I'm pretty sure my mom just goes to the store and just like, hey, what? You got this thing. So pretty much how it goes. Yeah. You, you had a lot of that. You had a lot of that on the strip. You had people like showing pictures of Concords. And it's like, no, there, there aren't Concords here on a Wednesday a year later. I'm sorry. But what's even better is Rowett's story. He brought up them asking if you wanted the box or not. A lot of places don't ask that. They only do it on the strip, yeah. really. Because people are traveling back home. So Makes sense. they probably don't want the box with them to get those shoes home. And they're not a sneakerhead like us trying to stack them on top of each other. So very, very interesting insight there. Uh, let's go ahead and before we recorded, we said top five. Let's do top three in the interest cool. of time. Um, let's go ahead and let's give out three of our favorite Christmas shoes. And I'll start it off. Then we'll go Mike and cool. row it. Uh, I'm going to start, and I, I said Mike second because I know one of his are in the same pack as mine. So I'm going to go with the D-Rose 3 from the Nightmare Before Christmas in 2012. I bought these while working at the House of Hoops, a different shoe store. Obviously, you know what House of Hoops is, but also on the strip. Um, so I was on the strip working at a couple different shoe stores, but I bought these, and they were the first pair of Adidas basketball shoes I had bought since like either those freaking T Mac threes. No, I bought a pair of a. Uh, I had a pair of T Mac fours with like the the, the heel twisted. Yeah. So, yeah. So I mean, since like the early T Mac line, is, so I had no interest in anything Adidas. But D Rose was just so cool. Like, if D Rose would have stayed healthy, he would have never had the cultural impact that Allen Iverson had. But from a small guard standpoint, just doing crazy things amongst giants. Like, yep. D, I mean, I would put healthy D rows up against any point guard ever. Easy. Like any, you, you pick any year and I, I don't want to guard that Derek Rose. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't care who you are. Now he may not land a jumper on you. He may not play the best defense back on you, but you're going to be on your heels the entire game and you're going to be tired. Dude. He's gonna like, tomahawk dunk on you from a standstill. Like <laughs> he's a more aerodynamic Baron Davis in a sense, and he to me he always looked like a cheetah or a jaguar, and he moved like one because that dude was speed personified. And all these young cats that talk about Russell Westbrook or maybe their older brothers talk about John Wall. D Rose was the guy that made that type of basketball not only acceptable but sustainable. Because of the fact that, my gosh, prior to that bad injury against Philly in the first round of the playoffs, like the dude was healthy. And it was one of those things where I watched him and I would say to anybody that was in passing, like, this is the most violent basketball player I've ever seen. Because the way he would contort his body and the way he would dunk on people with that ferocity was so impactful that I was just worried he's not going to be able to last because his bones might actually be ground up into dust. <laughs> No, dude, I still watch D-Rose highlights to this day, and that's why that was my, easily my second choice when I couldn't get the, uh, the altitudes. I was the D-Roses because he's still one of my favorite players to this day. I don't care. He's kind of had to alter his game due to injury. The dude has been resilient. He's come back, showed he still has much basketball life in him, and, I, I dude, he's a killer out there. Like he, he was literally just a cheat code for the Bulls. <sighs> he's grand hill for another generation the fact that uh -huh. he did come back and he's still an above average player and mm -hmm. just hearing other guys talk about d rose they speak in those hushed tones where they're like d rose was a problem so much yeah. respect on that pick robbie 
and the shoes were a problem like this deep velvety purple mm. glow in the dark accents the d rose 3 had a very speedy look to it obviously yeah. derrick rose we just talked about his his insane athleticism but just such a an out there design um i haven't really liked the d rose it's like the 773 and the first three d, d roses after that i have no interest but this one is one of my all-time favorites yeah what about you, Mike? What's what's your pick from the Nightmare Before Christmas? Yeah, man, I was just gonna say in the same vein, uh, I had the top ten two thousand from that pack, and one it, it it goes away from the the speed, but it's more the beefy side, and it was just so nice with all those different, you know, typically the top ten two thousand is layered with different materials, but this one's almost more like a um, whatever material they use in the upper that that vinyl. It was almost like a vac tech style where everything was just kind of pushed out in the right places to create the same look had the uh black and white uh, laces that look like jack skeleton suits had the glow in the dark outsole which is awesome with that chunky kind of bulbous outsole it just did it for i wore that's one of the shoes i played ball in like all year round and i think if i still had them i, I beat them to death but they broke next every time i brought them out to the 24 fit, 24 hour fitness court no nah. So I've never seen the movie, but you guys, the way you're talking about this pack, I want to watch this movie now. We, I remember just being told it was too scary for a, a mere seven, eight year old like myself. So I was like, okay, I'm never going to watch this movie. I'm scared <laughs> that. Oh, but classic, to man. your theme, yeah. But to your theme about wearing these shoes and beating them to the ground, I think one of my picks was the KD Copper Four, and I just beat that shoe to the point where there was a hole in the side of it. But it was just something about that KD Four that spoke to me, especially that Velcro strap, like. As somebody that secretly struggled tying shoes well into his 20s, the Velcro strap was very much a lifesaver in that sense. And that KD shoe just made it look cool. And I remember it just being distinctly copper and pennyish colored. And I forgot what the Christmas story behind it was, but I just realized that that shoe just jumped off the screen or jumped off that wall. Or more importantly, when you're playing basketball, it jumped off the court because it had enough of a vibrancy to it that you're like, okay, generic shoe, generic shoe. Whoa, 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 whoa. That KD is something nice. So that's mm -hmm. probably one of my picks for one of my Christmas shoes. Did it have red laces you can put in it too? You did. Yeah, I remember those. That was a that was a great shoe. That yeah, I a hundred percent agree. Um just I only remember it with the red laces now that I think about it. I saw a lot of people rocking those with the red laces. I, I swapped them out for the black laces. Forever the low key man. Minus your top pick. <laughs> Have to be. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna go up here with my second one. I'm going weird dives. I'm I'm, I'm picking weird shoes. So uh, my next one here is the LeBron 14. So Christmas Day against the Golden State Warriors, highly coveted matchup, repeat of the NBA Finals a year prior. Uh, Nike did a surprise sneakers drop of these LeBron 14s that nothing to do with Christmas, but it's like the, one of the first times they did a really cool LeBron in game sneakers drop. And I remember wanting them. I still want them super bad. Like of all the LeBron 14s in the world, give me that Christmas pair. Um, you can't find them anywhere. I mean, they sold out right away. They really didn't release too many other places. Like, for a couple of years, it was feeling like LeBron wasn't having like quote unquote like cool shoes that are gonna like sell out right away. And they well, they were called the out of nowheres. That's like the nickname they gave them. Hmm. And it's like mm -hmm. they dropped out of nowhere. They look fat. I mean, I love the LeBron 14. A lot of people aren't feeling that shoe the same way I do. But the 14 when it's on foot, super clean. But just to literally come out of nowhere and be so elusive to where pairs now are still pretty darn expensive. I haven't looked in a couple of years, but um, that's one LeBron that is in, in modern times has always eluded me. Um, I don't know why. It's just so cool to me that like every year we all kind of hope Nike does something or Jordan, any brand does something in game. That's why the LeBron watch stuff was so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. to get it and to have it actually be like a rare LeBron thing was even better. 
nowadays it's all in like overseas releases yeah uh, and all that kind of stuff so lebron 14 out of nowhere right now i think prices are a lot better than i thought they would be um the low pair is, yeah i mean no you can't even find a pair that's the, that's the best part really so you can't you can't even find a pair on StockX oversized 11 and a half there's a lot of gaps you have size 11 for 500 10 for 200 and that's about it so literally out of nowhere that's so cool to me that'll forever be a cool moment i remember watching and that that l stung a little bit when i when i when i took that one so what size you wear again robbie 12 oh you don't want to do this then (laughs) 1300 yeah right that's that's insane after the LeBron 12, well, let's even say LeBron 11, 12, and now, I guess, then the 13, um, pardon me, the 14. Like, the LeBron 11, people thought colorways were still going to pop off. They didn't resell like that. The 12, yeah. for sure, did not. The 13, for real, did not. So to have the LeBron 14 in one particular colorway be worth that much money out of nowhere, that's... that's it lives up to the name. Yeah, out of nowhere. The name. Well, hey. never have them. If you don't need the box, four hundred bucks. Oh, okay. I there might be a hundred dollar bill inside each one of those shoes. Well, just the fact not... that the box is worth nine hundred dollars blows my mind. I'm still not going to pay four hundred dollars for that shoe. Yeah. It's, it's at its root, it's a it's a LeBron fourteen. It's not. Yeah. Me. Um, but just a really cool Christmas moment to me, and uh, yeah. one of my favorite releases. So, what's your next one, Mike? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we're kind of on the same wavelength here because I also have chosen a LeBron as my number two pick, but it's a LeBron 9. Um, the LeBron 9, I don't know, it's kind of, I feel like it's a polarizing shoe because you have people who love it and people that hate it. And I love the LeBron 9. Uh, I had a few pairs of them, including the, uh, was it Miami Night pair? But I never had the Christmas pair. And I wish I would have grabbed them because they sat around for a little while, but that red and that, not just icy sole, but it was like, I see and glittery made it look like, you know, some Christmas decoration with the green laces, that basket weave on the side. It was just a perfect shoe. I love that shoe. Um, and it, again, just like the 14, not, I don't think not really is bad. It's just way, way too expensive for its own good. So with the LeBron retros we're getting here lately, hopefully that nine pops back up. Um, get lucky. I don't know, but I love that shoe. No, that was actually one of mine. So I'll go off the board oh, because no one, no, no, no. It's fine. I mean, that's the giving spirit, but it is a beautiful shoe. In a way, it always reminds me of Santa because, you know, Santa yeah. still exists in the hearts of all of his believers. So there you go. Shout out to the under 10 crowd listening to Sneaker History. But yeah, it's a beautiful shoe. You really can't say much to it because it's one of those shoes that has to be seen to be believed. And it truly conveys that Hollywood, uh, holiday, holiday and Hollywood spirit in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, a off the board selection was the KD7, which was the eggnog colorway. And really what it was, was the fact that it reminded me of my favorite shoe ever, which was the Air Jet Flight Max. And that colorway, especially with that red and that strap, reminded me of that Air Jet Max. So I was like, I'm never going to see this shoe retro when I'm alive. So if I squint really hard, maybe this is that shoe. So I like I said, that. Yeah, it, it was just a weird, weird justification. But KD has some heat when it comes to his Christmas sneakers. Uh, one of the other picks I had was also the KD8, which was the nicer, naughty yin and yang colorway. So I'll say both of those pairs because I don't think many people are clamoring for KD shoes as often as they are for the Kobe's and the LeBron's come Christmas. True, especially since yeah. not like he's fallen off the planet, but when you're hurt, you fall out of people's, you know, top of their heads you know so yeah. don't ever sleep on kevin durant i'm gonna go watch some kevin durant highlights from christmas days past after we get done recording now. watch d-rose highlights when we're done <laughs> right slim reaper so yeah. <laughs> i actually picked an, a kd shoe a kd shoe for my last pick um if you've listened in the past i sold every kd i owned when he went to the warriors it was only like 11 pairs it wasn't a lot but they're all gone i don't own one pair of kevin durant's anymore but um, if I had a chance to go back and get a retro, it'd be the KD3 Christmas, obviously Christmas. But yeah. KD3, man, from the LeBron 8 and obviously the Grinch, the KD3 gets left behind 
pretty much in every case when you think about those two other shoes. <laughs> um, I actually owned the the black colorway of the KD3 and the Christmas pair sat. And I remember working that day and being like, should I buy these? But then the, the sensible person within me kicked in is like, bro, you don't need two pairs of these damn KD3s. And I was right. I, I did not need two <laughs> pairs of them, but I really wish I would have gotten this yellow pair because a lot of people don't put it together, but the theme in that Christmas pack was red light, green light, yellow light, or red, mm -hmm. yellow, however you want to phrase that game, the children's game. So obviously the Grinch green, not only is it for the Grinch, but that's another reason why that shoe is green. The LeBron eight, and like many other LeBrons in that time was red for Christmas. So yellow doesn't make a lot of sense if you don't know that context of the pack. But to me, the yellow and blue with a little bit of red has always just looks really cool. So that's my pick. Yeah. The, I remember seeing those sitting at Nice Kicks. I went to Austin sometime while I was in college. I remember sitting there on the sales table and you don't know how many times I've kicked myself that one in like the uh, the dream sickle colorway just sitting there like if i can go back and tell my stupid 20 year old self buy that stop being an idiot <sighs> need a time machine <laughs> i'm the same way about the very first kd with the sonic green and the black like i think kevin durant especially those early models there was a lot of regret attributed to those models because like it was a cheap shoe it was cool because he was on the come up and just to your point, I wish I could grab 21 year old row and be like, just buy this shoe. You're going to yeah. love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess who's up next. Was it you, Mike? Oh yeah. Number one. So my number one sneaker, we actually mentioned it a little bit earlier. Uh, it is the Kobe eight in the Christmas light colorway because I forgot that the Kobe eight actually had two Christmas colorways. You had this one with two years in mm -hmm. row. So you had this one, which is going to be, was that because he was injured that they did two for the same? Thought yes. so. He did, the second year was the Kobe 8 SS with like the shedding. Oh, yeah. 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 Nobody has that one. Not wearable at all, but very cool. Because if you kick somebody with that, you may just like, like murder <laughs> your skin. <laughs> but the Christmas light one or Christmas sweater, whatever you want to call it, it was just really well done. It really spoke Christmas. Might be like an old school like Christmas like show or whatever because it was bright colors, but it was almost like an old wool look to it. I don't know, I love it. Uh, one of the ones, that was when sneakers started getting harder to get. And I um, wasn't able to get my hands on this one if they ever retro. Hopefully with this trend of everything coming back out, we'll get them in the near future. Very well said. And I'll use that segue to say my number one overall Christmas pick was the Kobe 7, which we kind of alluded to as well earlier in the show. I just like the fact that it had enough of Christmas past with the, the G word colorway there. And also <laughs> that purple that was indicative of the Lakers. And then also the yeah. fact that you could wear the shoe two different ways. You had the performance sleeve yeah. on your foot, and then you could have also made it a little bit more casual. So depending on if you wanted to strike hard or if you wanted to strike fast. And I remember watching the Christmas game for that season. And I remember everybody that had front row seats to that game got a pair of those sneakers complimentary. And that was the first time where my folks kind of saw that evolution of, holy cow, these sneakers are a status symbol as much as they are just some heat on your feet. So it kind of was one of those full circle moments. And I think Kobe always did a great job with Christmas sneakers in particular. And it's one of those things I secretly hope comes back, which is that Christmas unveiling of sneakers, because there is something to be said about gathering with your family, watching basketball, and then saying, wow, there's some truly unique colorways out there that are not only capturing the moment, but they're capturing the spirit of Christmas. Very well said. That's a beautiful sentiment. And on that, that's like a good Christmas spirit high note to end on. So those are our nine picks of our favorite Christmas shoes. What are, what are your favorite pairs? Are you going to wear something particular in the next coming weeks? Are you the kind of person that has enough Christmas shoes to do a whole like 12 days of Christmas of Christmas shoes? Yeah. Let us know. Join the Discord and post your photos in there of what you're rocking. Tag it on Instagram. Drop us a, a Twitter mention. How, however you want to interact with us. We love to see what you're doing. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you're following Sneaker History at Sneaker History on all major platforms. I've been Robbie. You can find me at R-A-H-B-E-E-702. And Mike, where can they find you? 
Yeah, man. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at MadWatcher789 and, of course, on YouTube at Mike Guillory. Rohit, tell them where to get you, man. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Rohizi and on Instagram at RohitM13. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for your time, and thank you, Ooh. listeners, for doing just that. Hope everybody has a great day. All right. See ya. Happy holidays. Woo.